Hello and welcome back to part two of this Blender Tasty series. We are taking a look at how to create this marble machine. And in today's tutorial, we'll take a look at how to animate. I'll show you a couple of really simple, really useful techniques that will just make your animation times way shorter. As always, there's a free resource file in the description below on my Gumroad available for free. Make sure to subscribe to the channel so you can see when the new videos roll out. Leave a like, I always appreciate those and comment whatever you would like to learn or know more about in the future of the channel helps me out a lot let's get into it this is where we left off last time we've created our little character right here right now what i'm gonna do now is just organize my stuff again a bit more as you can see i haven't named anything right here so i'm just gonna take a second to rename all of these guys so these are our teeth boys right here and this is gonna be i let's say one and i will just push these guys up to the collection above. So they are within this little collection right here, all in one space. We will be animating these guys to like roll around. So we want to have a combination of rigid body physics and also a combination of the actual keyframes. Before we start doing anything, we need to first do the track animation. So what this means is we'll be taking these little guys right here, our little track, and we'll animate this thing like wobbling around. So I'll show you a couple of very useful techniques. At least they help me personally out a lot of the times to animate something super quickly, but still making it look like it's really properly animated. So before we continue, I'm just gonna select all of the guys on my track and set up a empty object. Basically, we're gonna parent these to the object. This means that they are going to follow the location and rotation and scale of the empty object okay so let me demonstrate so i want to have this object to be in the middle of all of these tracks so i'm just selecting all of these tracks shift s and then cursor to select it i'm just going to put it dead center now i'm going to press shift a and add a empty i'm just going to put a sphere i don't know it just looks kind of cool maybe make it scale it up you know make it seem a bit bigger so it's kind of enveloping the whole track and I'm going to select the track again, all of these guys. Maybe I'm going to select the teeth as well. And then just shift select the empty as the last one and press control P, object keep transform. So now, for example, if I just use the empty and I just turn it around, you can see this bad boy starts turning around. That's great. Now, how do we animate this guy? Okay, let me divide the screen. So I'm going to go into my right corner right there, click and then drag. Now I'm going to choose the graph editor, and this is going to look something like that. Click normalize. So most of your curves are going to be visible in the same line. So you don't have like these crazy increments. Hover with my mouse on the left side, press I, and I just need the rotation. We'll be just animating the rotation of our guy right here. So what I want to do is have a rotation that it's going to be like this. So it's going to kind of rotate in like an interval on the y axis left and right and then rotate continuously on the z so we have like this kind of weird wobbly motion and one thing would be to just go and manually keyframe everything but we have actually a kind of a easier way to do that so i'm just opening my subsection here of the object transform we can see all of the actions right here and i'm going to press n while hovering on the right hand of the screen and go under modifiers. Now I'm gonna choose the Y and I'm gonna add a built-in function. Now you can see already it started working. Now if I press play, you can see that this guy is just going all over the place. Now we're gonna go through a couple of these controls. So amplitude is how, let's say how much is gonna rotate. Uh, first of all, we need it to calm down and we'll do that by lowering down the phase multiplier. Now I'm just gonna double click there and just press 0 0.04, something like that. So I want this nice smooth motion. Now I don't wanna go too overboard with the rotation because I don't want the balls to fall out. And I'm just gonna lower the amplitude to let's say something like 0 0.6, something like that. We're just doing very ballpark values right here because we'll be correcting everything once the rigid body simulation comes in and now i just need to have this bad boy rotating on the z-axis so i'm just going to choose my z rotation add a modifier and i'm going to add a generator 
And again, as you can see, this guy is just going crazy, rotating like crazy around. So how do we correct that? We just go under this X something one and then lower it down to a super low number, something like 0 0.03, something like that. And now you can see we have our little bad boy right here rotating, having this like nice and swaying motion. So in order to set up the rigid body system, I'm just going to close my little section right here of the graph editor. And now I'm going to move under the physics properties section. So we need to set up a couple of things. So our balls right here, these are going to be, let's press some GZ. So we move them up a bit. These are going to be our rigid bodies. And these are going to be the active rigid bodies, which means that they're going to actively move and actively participate in the simulation and respond to whatever is happening. For now, I'm just going to set them to mesh, both of them. Now, if you click on the other one, you will notice that it didn't copy the same settings, even though they were chosen at the same time or they were shift selected or whatever you want to call it. So I'm just clicking on the one that doesn't have any settings then shift choosing, shift clicking, whatever you want to call it, the other one that has the settings. And I press, then I press space to open up my search bar. I think there is a different shortcut in the different blender schemes, but in my case, it's space, search bar, and then I type in copy from active. And now if I press on my previous ball again, you can see that it has the exact same settings. If I press play, both balls fall through the floor. And that's because we need to set up a passive rigid body system. And this is going to be our little arches right here. So I'm going to press one of the arches and press the rigid body, set it to passive. Be very careful if the object is meant to be passive. So it's not going to just fall through the floor because if we leave it at active, our little piece right there is just going to fall down. You need to have it in passive. And if it's animated or or parented to something that's animated, you need to click the animated part. So now you can see it's actually having some type of interference. Change it to mesh and the mesh in the source, I'll choose final. Now, in some cases, it's going to be a bit still heavy on some machines because what this does final means it's taking into account all of the settings in the modifiers chain. So now if I click, you can see that it's actually fitting inside of the thing. The sensitivity means like the margin of the distance between the sphere and the object of collision, in this case, our arc. So I want to just lower it down to something like 0 0.03. And I want to do the same for the sphere right there, 0 0.03 around there. See what that does, if it's fine, if it works okay, perfect. Now you can see again, falls out, falls down, but this is for now, perfect. It works fine. What we want to do right now is again, choose one of our little previous spaces right here. And then I'm just going to choose all of the other arches and then shift select the last one. And again, copy from active. Now, when I press play, boom, the animation is working and we have our little displacement of eyes right here. And now it's just time to fine tune the things a bit. What I want to do is just create a bit less friction. And that's a very easy setting to take care of. Just choose one of your arches right here, surface response, and you have friction. Just drop it down to something like 0 0.1, something like that. You can do the same for the sphere, just 0 0.1. And now again, choosing all of your arches, choose the one that has the change as the last one press space or whatever the shortcut for a search bar is, and then copy from active. And this is going to copy these settings again. And you can see that now they, they run way more aggressively around our little area right here. And they're not falling out, which is actually kind of a miracle. Like they're just barely hanging on, but yeah, basically this is it. This is essentially what you need to know about this type of animation. Super simple, super easy. It doesn't take a long time. So yeah, this is going to be it for this tutorial. Hopefully you've learned something useful. Hopefully you've learned something new. In our next part, we'll take a look at lighting and texturing. Yes, we'll be setting up a couple of textures. We'll be setting up a couple of lights. As always, there's a free resource file in the description below. Uh, make sure to subscribe to the channel so you can see the new parts coming in. Drop a like. I always appreciate those and leave a comment. I always try and make time to read those and see what you guys are up with. So yeah, I'll see you in the next one.